All right, so how do you go from being a cop to a comedian? And not just a comedian, but a comedian with your own late night talk show, because that is what Mike Bullard managed to pull off. For Mike, being a police officer wasn't as fun as he'd hoped, so he pursued his other childhood dream, which was comedy. Now, as kids, Mike and his brother Pat would stay up and watch the late night master at work. You get the feeling that Dan Quill's golf bag doesn't have a full set of irons. <laughs> And when his brother started making waves as a writer on shows like Roseanne and Grace Under Fire, Mike got the courage to get up on stage himself. Nice set, too. Bad place to be a Christian comic. <laughs> he honed his talents, became known for his spritzing, which are those off-the-cuff zingers with the audience. How old are you, Ryan? I'll be 23 soon. You'll be 23 soon. Well, if you knew the date, you'd be an adult, wouldn't you? Mike was razor sharp on stage, and in 1997, all that work paid off, and his own talk show, Open Mike with Mike Bullard, was born. Thank you very much for your reaction, fellas, but don't bow. I'm not a god, I'm just special. It started small, but it became a big deal. You see, talk shows had always thrived in the States, but in Canada, we'd never really cracked the nightly until Mike came along. But he wasn't entirely happy with the show, and after a messy breakup with CTV, he moved it to Global, where within a few months, the show was canceled. We'll see if the experience was a bitter one or a good one. Either way, Mike is back on the radio, sounding off on the day's news and whatever else strikes him. I love it when women say they're stay-at-home moms. Sounds like, sounds like you're married to a Mennonite. You stay home with those kids and do not leave that house. Everybody, please welcome Mike Bullard! Oh, George. Hey, Good to see you. How are you, man? Nice. There you go. What'd you do? Draw eyes and lips on a full moon? That really looks great, George. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, dude. We just nice way to start. That's the picture you took, bro. Wasn't me. <laughs> okay. How are? How you been? Good. How are you? Actually, your radio show's doing great. Yeah, yeah. Very happy there. You're back on radio in Toronto, but people can listen to it online as well. Right. Um, very happy there. I'm happy to have you here in the red chair. You know, it's, it's a great chair. When you had your late night talk show, you had me on twice, which I was very appreciative of that time. What was your experience like? When you were on? Yeah, well, I mean, that was obviously oh, the whole thing amazing. overall, Injury, or is yeah. it just going to be about you, George? No, no, I think it's about you, yeah. Uh, the whole thing overall was pretty good, you know? It's, uh, what, it was six, seven years, and uh, I love the way people say it's the hardest job in show business. Yes, it is, but <laughs> in real life, it's still the easiest job in the world, no, so you totally don't dare is. say that, right? No, for sure. It's like the showbiz hard work is different than regular hard work. <laughs> so as far as showbiz goes, yeah, it's a really hard job. It's like saying uh, there's Hollywood courage and regular courage. Hollywood courage is when you blacken your tooth to get an Academy Award, and real courage is when you actually get a take tooth. a bullet for somebody else, right? <laughs> That's you know. well, speaking of regular jobs, what kind of cop were you? Uh, motorcycle. No, I know that, but what kind of cop were you? Were you a good cop? Or <laughs> you, what kind of cop were you? You know what? The big problem with the police department with me was I'm the kind of guy who likes to mind my own business, and that's in direct conflict with that type of job, right? <laughs> I, had a, I had a tendency to ignore anything I saw. Seriously? You know what I mean? And the whole thing ended with Jay Walker shots fired, taking it too seriously one day, so that was it. It was over for me. I didn't like it. But you'd spent your whole life wanting to be a cop, right? Yeah, and then you get there and you go, why did I want to do this? I mean, why did I want to do this? I hate it. You know, the uniforms are like the stuff we used to see growing up watching uh, all those CBC shows. Mm -hmm. It's not those cool turtlenecks and leather jackets like New York guys wear. Right. So you get there and you go, this is, I look like a security guard. Like, you know, it's like a <laughs> bandolier and a security, you look at a cross between a Mexican bandit and a security guard and you go, this is not for me. This is not my kind of job. Well, and a motorcycle cop has to ride in the winter too, don't they? Yeah, they had to ride in the winter then. And did you do that? What was that like? Oh, man, it was a hassle. Right. Like, you just, uh, you had a tendency to ignore a lot of things you saw. You know what I mean? If you saw somebody speeding, there's no way you were going to speed to catch up to them, not with no roof, no heater. Right. <laughs> so if somebody was doing more than 20 over, that's it. They're gone. Good for you. <laughs> There's no way I was going to do it. There's just no way in the world. You know what it's like. You have a bike. Yeah, so yeah. every 10K you go, the temperature goes down 10 degrees. Right. So if a guy was uh, going more than a fast walk, there's no way he got away with murder. <laughs> there's no chance. There's no way I was doing it. But obviously jokes are, you know, are a staple for you. So were you, when, and you become a stand-up comic, but were you funny when you were pulling no, people a over? No, uh, I had a staff sergeant who said to me, uh, you know, the police department is no place for a sense of humor. I went, oh, really? <laughs> Great. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> Sorry. And then, and then the stand-up stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, to, to, making the transition from stand-up to talk TV is one thing, but then making it to talk... Yeah, but you can make the transition if you host. Yeah. You know, I remember reading once that Letterman only emceed, right? And when I read that, I decided, hey, I'm not going to headline, I'm not going to middle, I'm only going to emcee. Because right. what you do is you use this, and then you have no choice but to, uh, you know, do stuff off the top of your head. So I figured that's the way to do it. That's the way to get a talk show. 
So that's why I chose to go that route with Yuck Yucks and other places I work. So you'd wanted to get a talk show the yeah, whole time. Yeah, I wanted a talk show all along. It's so hard to pull one off, man. You blazed a trail for us. Like, well, our show wouldn't be able to do what we did without the stuff yeah, that you've done. Well, why don't you take a week off and give it to me? No. Because, <laughs> well, first of all, it's a CBC. I don't take a week off yeah, 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 <laughs> when, when we're true. shooting. That's true. But uh, uh, yeah, that, I, I hate it when people walk up to me and say that, right? It makes it feel like you had it all. Then you developed a heroin problem yeah. and you lost it all, right? Well, let's see, but I don't. It's I, like makes you feel like the Ashley McIsaac of talk shows when people say that to you. No, you know but see, I mean? I you brought Celtic music to the forefront and then you didn't make any money. What the hell's your problem? Well, you're the Ramones, then. How about that? Yeah, the Ramones, exactly. No, but see, I don't look at um, the the end of your show like I don't think your show failed. I think it's amazing to pull it off for the length of time. Yeah, that you did. seven years here. It's like dog years in Canada, right? TV's right. like dog years. <laughs> Every year you put in is like seven in the U.S. Absolutely. It's the same deal. Well, you have a connection with CBC. Anyway, let's, 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 let's play this. Watch this. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Here once again with another two minutes of hate, the ever-petulant Mike Bowler. I hate it when you finally get a date. Yeah, you great. ask the girl what she wants to do, and she says, I don't know. What do you want to do? You can't tell her the truth because she'll get scared and back out. I hate that. <laughs> the main reason I hate dating is because if my wife finds out I'm seeing other women, she's going to kill me. <laughs> Yeah, you the, and uh, Ben Murgy, right? Me and Ben Murgy. Me and Ben Murgy. I'll never forget the first time I did that show. Uh, I walk out, and you know, Ben, Ralph's a great guy. Yeah, great guy. Off camera, Ralph's a great guy. Uh, on camera, Ralph's not such a great guy. <laughs> I walked out, we were about to do the show, and he said to me, uh, hey, Bullard, I hope you're ready for this. Uh, Two million people watching. I said, oh, that was last season, Ralph. <laughs> So you knew how to <laughs> stick it back. <laughs> when, when you made the switch from CTV to Global, were you nervous about it? Uh, I would have been if I'd know what was going to happen. <laughs> but but I, I didn't. You so, didn't know? No. Well, no. of course, of course, you don't go in there thinking it's not going to last. I mean, no, you go. You, you know, the guy uh, tells you he wants you to come there. That's great. And then, uh, then the guy dies two weeks before you start. What are you going to say? <laughs> you know Who are you going to be mad at? What's the point of hating the guy now? <laughs> I mean, Did you, were you bitter at all? I mean, when you, no. when you left? No, I was, uh, uh, you know, you get to a point where you wish you'd stayed where you were, yeah. right? The grass is always greener, but uh, no, I wasn't upset at all, really. I, I just uh, decided to uh, lay low for a while. You know, the difference between uh, this job and being a plumber is when a plumber loses his job, the only people who know are other plumbers. Right. Right. <laughs> you, try, you try going out to Tim Hortons to get a coffee. After something like that happens, and oh, what happened? What happened? Yeah. What happened? From 50 people, right? Yeah. And then you start using the drive through because you want to avoid people. <laughs> and then uh, eventually you start going out at 2 o'clock in the morning for coffee and a muffin. Who the hell wants coffee and a muffin at 2 in the morning right. unless you have a night shift job? Um, right? uh, talk radio is actually, uh, having done it, it's a very difficult thing to pull off. So when you get on, when you get on that mic, you recognize that um, talk radio is a powerhouse for voters in a way. You know, my, my, my thing is... Uh, as far as, a, like, these guys are always arguing about OHIP or uh, whatever, whatever it's called now, the Ontario Health Card. They're always arguing about this stuff all the time and saying, oh, my God, this is awful, what a horrible thing. And uh, uh, my argument is, uh, you know what, the only, the only people who hate it are the people who took it for granted, right? right. Like, they talk about 10 minutes, 15 minutes waiting to see your doctor. Who gives a damn if you got to wait 10, 15 minutes to see your doctor? You know what I mean? I've waited 25 minutes to get an oil change. <laughs> like, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? And, and you, got, you got people coming up who go, well, wait a minute, I wasn't around when we didn't have this, so therefore, I feel entitled and I think it's, uh, you know, a load of crap that I have to wait to see somebody. Me, I'll wait all day long if it means I'm not going to lose my house. Right. Right? Absolutely. I have no issue with it. Beyond the mic, by the way, the radio show with Mike Bullard. Listen online at Newstalk1010.com and stay on and listen to my good friend Jim Richards as well. It's good to see you, Mike. You too, pal. Thanks, you look great. Mike Bullard, we'll be right back.